Hi everybody. Well, it is 11 o'clock at night and I'm putting together this review about the Solution 725 preamplifier. But before I go into details, as far as my thoughts are concerned with regards to this piece, you know the drill. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, continue to support my channel, and Let's continue to do this. Let me continue to bring you some of the best components that are out there for your view and pleasure. Anyway, Solution 725, the preamplifier you're seeing right here. This puppy MSRPs for about $60,000 without the phono stage. With the phono stage, it is 65K. This one that you see here has the optional phono stage, so the MSRP would be $65,000. So let's talk about Solution. Solution is a company that hasn't really been around very long. Um, one of my biggest surprises about this company is how a company can really come out of nowhere and establish themselves as one of the top brands out there in the audiophile community. Okay, I can't really think of another brand at this moment that I have owned that has had the impact that this preamplifier had on me. Okay, and I know many of you guys want to know is this the best preamplifier I have ever owned? You guys are very curious to know this, and I'm going to go into details and give you my take on this. Some of the preamplifiers that I have owned are as follows. I've had the Pass Labs XP32, Pass Labs XP30, the Boulder 2010, Boulder 2110, Luxman 900U, Audio Research Ref6 SE, Audio Research Ref10, Constellation Audio Pictor, Jeff Rowland uh, Chorus, uh, Momentum HD. Merrill Audio Christine. And I am sure I am forgetting a preamplifier that I can think of right now. But that's at a high level the list of preamplifiers that I have on. Which brings me to this. I have always been curious about Solution, guys. Always wanted to try it. I got to hear it. I got to hear it for a few months. I got to get myself acquainted with the sound signature, with the resolution, with the tonality of this preamplifier, and I was never disappointed. Here are some of the pros that I found with the Solution 725. Number one, build quality. This is built, guys, like a brick. This incredible looking piece, it is just built to extreme standards. Um, the remote works perfectly fine. There's never any glitches. It doesn't ever have any hiccups. It doesn't ever sound um, funny or I never got any buzzing sounds. I never got any humming noises, nothing. This preamplifier worked perfect each and every time. I can't really say that about other preamplifiers that I have owned in the past, but this preamplifier, when it comes to functionality, is flawless, guys. It just works each and every time. As far as Sonics, what I can tell you guys, if you are a detail freak, yes, you heard it. If you're that guy who craves a, a, an immense amount of resolution and detail, you got it right here. This is the king. This to me is the most detailed preamplifier I have ever owned, period. Easily besting some of the best preamplifiers that I have owned. Um, to include this, the Boulder 2110. Now, um, I can tell you that the clarity on this unit is completely, it has always completely astonished me. The capacitance of this preamplifier is half a million microfarads, which is essentially the same as a Griffin Mephisto. Just to give you an idea. Think about it. This has the same capacitance as a Griffin Mephisto. I mean, that's crazy. Half a million microfarads. So what does that mean? That means that it has tremendous bass, 
tremendous control over your speakers. It really, really shows you how poor, no matter how expensive a DAC is, how poor a DAC is as a preamplifier. This is the main, this is actually the reason why I have been telling you all, no DAC, I don't care where you look, no DAC can do the job of a real, real preamplifier. It can't. It's not designed to do what this monster can do, okay? This weighs 65 pounds, it's overbuilt, okay? Having uh, the MSB reference DAC, which has basically every option you can think of, and it's a great preamplifier as well, great is only great. This is outstanding as a preamplifier. This is an outstanding preamplifier, okay? Um, it really put it all into perspective as far as how much information you really miss when you do not have a preamplifier of this caliber. If you think right now you have a, an incredible on stage, you really have just, you're blown away with your DAC straight into your amps, and you really, really are just doing backflips over what you're hearing. I'm gonna tell you something, if you have not heard this, if you have not had the opportunity to own this, you have no idea. You have no idea what you're missing. This is an incredible piece, just at every level. It is a very crystal clear preamplifier. It never sounded veiled. It never sounded dark. It never sounded rolled off. It never sounded slow. It never sounded just boring, never. It always gave you this clarity, this feeling that you're there that continued to put a smile on my face day in, day out. With regards to, again, the bass, it's all there, guys. The bass is some of the best bass control that I have ever owned. If you've had speakers that you felt needed more bass, that you felt needed more grip, if you've always needed more thrust with your setup, right here, this will do it. This will do it. One of the greatest things that I've noticed about this preamplifier, guys, it only uses one power cord. And to my surprise, one of the best power cords that I found uh, with this, that worked really well with this, was actually the AudioQuest Hurricane. Not the expensive Dragon. Really loved what the AudioQuest Hurricane did with this. I liked it even better, to be honest with you, than, than what the AudioQuest Dragon did with it. Um, again, it's just system matching, so that was my preference. Even with the stock power cord, guys, that it comes with, it will blow your mind. Even with that stock, stock power cord, it's it's it reminded me a lot of the Boulder 2110. It just always sounded good. It didn't matter. It didn't matter where you had it plugged in. It always, always blew your mind. One of the greatest things that I have encountered about this preamplifier is that you never really have to crank it up to get the full benefits, to get maximum benefits. You can have this at low volume and you'll still get everything, all the information, all the detail, full flavor, if you will, at low volumes, you will get it all. Now, with regards to the cons, as you guys know, every, every preamplifier, every component, if you will, has pros and cons. So this, although it is, it is one of the best preamplifiers out there, it does not come without any cons, okay? So one of the cons that I found with it is, of course, the MSRP. It's very expensive, guys. It is an extremely, extremely expensive um, preamplifier, um, if, which unfortunately isn't within many budgets out there. Another thing that I find a con is the fact that it is made in Switzerland. If this animal breaks, unfortunately, guys, yes, I hate to break it to you. It has to go back to Switzerland and you have to eat those shipping charges. If you happen to buy it on the used market, yes, guys, you're going to have to pay for the labor to get it fixed plus shipping both ways. Just to give you a point of reference of what it would cost to ship this over to Switzerland. Now, I actually did my homework. 
I called around, I took measurements, the box, the weight, and I was just pretending that I had a unit that I needed to ship to Switzerland. Right? And, I, and I wanted to get just a quote to see how much it would be to ship this animal to Switzerland. Guys, to give you an idea, DHL, DHL quoted me at $1,900 one way. $1,900, guys, because you have to put the insurance for this. You don't want this to break. You got to insure it, right? And the weight. And it's a wooden crate. So you're looking at about $4,000, give or take, just for a round trip. For this machine just to just to travel back and forth to you without the labor costs included so it is safe to assume that if this thing breaks and you have to ship it back to switzerland because i gotta tell you you don't want anybody to touch it you do not want anyone to touch this here you simply do not want this is not the equipment you hand out to your local electronics you know technician this is a piece that must go back to solution to get repaired you're probably looking at about $5,000 to get this unit fixed. If this breaks, yes, be prepared for that. But it should come at no surprise. If you buy a car that is an expensive vehicle like a, like a Range Rover and it has no warranty, it shouldn't be surprising to you that anything on that car, anything that breaks, is going to cost you an arm and a leg. It, this is no different. Okay, so I got to say that. Another con that I found with this preamplifier was the fact that careful matching, in my opinion, with this is crucial. Now, does that mean that it won't work with a lot of a lot of amplifiers out there? No, guys. I had great results with the Constellation uh, Centaur's uh, MK1s. Amazing resolution, amazing musicality, amazing clarity. It was amazing. But I didn't get good results with other amplifiers that I had here. I'm going to say that, okay? So it could be just a game of chess where you have to figure out what goes with what. So when it comes to that, I believe that this preamplifier, if you're going to buy this, do your homework. Make sure it's going to work quite well with your current amplifier. But I would say I highly suggest that you buy a solution amplifier for this. Why? This brings me to my next con. Soundstage. Guys, I found the soundstage, although very focused, and it was extremely focused. I'm not going to say it was. A lot of clarity, a lot of crystal clear resolution. I found it somewhat narrow. I never found the, the soundstage to be quite really wide and deep and tall this could be because of the fact that i do not own the 711s or the 701 i mean it could be that i really can't tell you maybe it needs its matching amplifiers to really open up but no matter what i try no matter what amplifier no matter what amplifier i tried what power cords i tried what xlrs i tried i always found myself looking for a little more sound stage okay uh, i couldn't get it to open up but I'm going to take the blame on that. I'm going to I'm going to assume that this is because I never had the matching amplifiers for it, okay? The next con here that I found with this unit is the fact that some might say it sounds a little dry. It might sound a little analytical. It might sound uh, sterile. It, all kinds of descriptions that we can give this unit and at the end of the day, I think it's up to us, the users, the owners, to really decide whether this flavor is the type of flavor we should go for. Uh, I don't think it's everybody's cup of tea, sonically speaking. I do believe this is a specific type of um, audiophile that likes this type of preamplification. Why? Because it is very clear. It's got a lot of resolution. And sometimes that massive amount of resolution might get to you guys might get might might be a little too overwhelming for some of you okay but if you are a person that just loves detail and just loves that quiet background and you want to get all that information presented to you this is it but be warned that type of presentation highly resolving very very hyper detail is not everybody's cup of tea and if you've never experienced that 
I highly suggest you audition at first because it will put you in front of a level of information that you never thought was possible before. I unfortunately will say that there aren't many solution dealers out there and it's very hard to find this brand. The usual, the usual situation that you see is that you're gonna see on the used market a 720 or a 721, which is the previous version. Externally speaking, they are identical. Same chassis, same display, same remote. However, a 721 can be converted into a 725, which is what this is, right? An actual 725. This is an original 725, not, a, not an upgraded 721. 721 will cost, will cost $15,000, I think, to transform it into a 725. Again, $15,000 to turn a 721 into a 725. And there is a lot of difference, guys, sonically, day and night. They don't even compare. The power supply on this is different than the 721. This right here, in my opinion, in conclusion, and to end this review, I believe this is the best solid state preamplifier I have ever owned. You heard it from me. I am going to give it my 100% approval for those of you who are looking for a world-class preamplifier. For me, this has been an, an amazing experience. Unfortunately, this is not even mine anymore. It's already uh, going to the new owner. And I, before I even made this video, by the way, I already had an owner for this. It was already sold. You're not gonna find a lot of people that question this unit. This unit has an amazing resume already out of the gate. People who buy this know what they're getting. It's it's kind of like that unit that you know what it is and you leave it at that. You don't even question yourself uh, whether it's good or not good enough. This is an amazing piece. That's all you got to know, okay? And it's going to break my heart that it's going to a new owner, but you guys know me. Yes, it is the best line stage I've ever owned, but I'm going to say to you that the show must continue and I got to keep keep the show going and I have more plans. I got a new preamplifier coming um, and I have this secret class A preamplifier in my room that you guys do not know what it is yet. So I got other things coming up as of today without including the secret preamplifier, I'll say it again, as of today, without including the secret preamplifier and the future preamplifier that I have ordered, this is the best preamplifier I've owned. You heard it from me, and hopefully if you have the chance to get one of these, you guys can shoot me an email and let me know how you like it. I bet you guys will love what this thing can do. Take care, and that's all I got for tonight. Peace.